The next kind of transformation that we'll be looking at in detail are reflections. Uh, the reflection is something that occurs in nature quite a bit. For example, with water uh, reflecting something. Um, the pre-image here obviously was a sign that is hard to read. Uh, it was made all backwards and everything so that when it's reversed um, in the water, it appears as words that you can actually read. Um, pretty clever. Um, let's move forward and look at reflections. So a reflection in a line M maps every point P in the plane to point P prime. In other words, the pre-image point P gets mapped to the image point P prime um, so that um, these properties are true. First of all, the line that is created between them has to be bisected by the line of reflection, meaning that the distance from P to the line is the same as the distance from P prime to the line. Now, those distances have to be congruent distances, and the line segment between them has to be uh, perpendicular. Um, unless point P is on the line itself, then its image and pre-image point are the exact same point. Um, and that's kind of uh, goes without saying. I'm now going to reflect this triangle uh, in the y-axis. Uh, we were say reflect in a line. Um, I don't know exactly why we use that language, but that's the language they use. So I'm going to reflect this line in the y-axis. Um, again, the thing that we need to know whenever we do a reflection is where is the line that you're reflecting it about? And this year we are only reflecting in the, either the x-axis or else the y-axis. So if I take a look at point C, for example, um, and I need to reflect this in the y-axis, then the line that is created between C and C prime, wherever that is, has to be uh, perpendicular to y, which then means that it's got to be somewhere along that same uh, horizontal that C is on. And it also needs to be um, bisected by the y-axis. So this being two, dis or two units away in distance from the y-axis, then C prime needs to also be two units away on a perpendicular to the y-axis. So C prime has to be there. I'll label it. B prime, we can do the same thing. Um, it has to be perpendicular to the y-axis, so I can create a horizontal that goes across. And up to this point, I've gone over four units. And if it's going to be bisected by the y-axis, then B prime also has to be four units on the same horizontal away from the y-axis. So there is B prime. And then I can do the same thing. Um, A prime needs to be three units from the y-axis on the same horizontal. There is A prime. And now I can draw my triangle. And I'll use red. Okay, so there is the image in red of the pre-image, which is in blue. Of So I've reflected now uh, triangle ABC to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Again, note uh, the purple lines here, or the dark blue lines, whatever, um, are all bisected by the y-axis, and they're all perpendicular to the y-axis, um, which is one of the properties that we looked at at the beginning as part of the definition of a reflection. Okay, here we're going to reflect segment KL. Um, segment KL, again, um, reflecting in the y-axis first. So um, the K is two units away from Y, and it needs to be perpendicular. Uh, so K is going to get, or K prime, will get mapped to there. That's a horrible K prime. <clears throat> L prime is also three units away, and it needs to be perpendicular and three units. So L prime needs to be here. And that means the image of K prime, L prime, is going to look something like this. Notice that in this particular circumstance, there is a point on my line that's about right here um, that is going to be the image and pre-image point on that line segment are the exact same point. And that's okay, and that happens sometimes. 
Now let's reflect KL in the um, x-axis, just to see an example of that. Okay, so K needs to be uh, perpendicular to the line of reflection, so this time it's going to be perpendicular down here, um, and it's three units away from the x-axis, so K prime needs to be perpendicular and three units away from the x-axis. So here's K prime, uh, and then L prime is four units away from the x-axis, uh, so L prime needs to be up here. Notice it looks very similar to what K prime L prime did before, um, only slightly different. Um, we should actually take a look at the coordinates now of this um, image and pre-image. So K is at negative 2 comma 3, and L is at 3 comma negative 4. Um, K prime is at negative 2, negative 3, and L prime is at 3, negative 4. Oops, not negative 4, 3, comma 4. Uh, let's take a look at these back to back or, or stacked above each other so that we can kind of see what's going on. Okay, I've stacked the uh, image and pre-image points right above each other so that it's easier to see that the x-coordinates stay the exact same when we reflect in the x-axis. The y-coordinates become opposites when we reflect in the y-axis, or in the x-axis, excuse me. Um, and the reverse would be true. If we went back and looked at the coordinates from when I reflected in the y-axis, it would have been the y-coordinates that stayed the same and the x-coordinates that became the opposites. So this gives us a nice little rule. When we reflect in the x-axis, like in this picture here, um, the x-coordinates get to stay the same. Um, and so the rule becomes, if you have coordinate x, y, then the image for that coordinate will be x opposite of y. And they put a minus sign there um, so that you know that that's opposite. If it was a negative to begin with, you're going to make it positive. If it's positive to begin with, you make it negative. That's what a minus sign in front of it means. Um, and then they say um, multiply the y-coordinate by negative 1. That just changes the sign of the y-coordinate. If it's a reflection in the y-axis, then it's the y-coordinate that stays the same, and it's the x-coordinate that becomes the opposite. So in this case, they started us out with a negative x-coordinate, and it became a positive one, which is like what I was saying just a moment ago. These rules down here use the same um, notation, the coordinate rules for reflections, um, they're just using a and b and then a negative b, um, which is the same thing as x, y, uh, but maybe this is more concise or takes up less space in your notes than this image does at the top. Take your pick. They both mean the same thing. Okay, now we've got an example that we can look at. So we've got a triangle ABC, and they've given me the coordinates. Um, I've got the graph down there, and I could use the graph, but we need to know how to get the coordinates from these rules that we just looked at. So I've got a reflection in the y-axis, they're telling me, um, meaning that my y-coordinates should stay the same, and my a-coordinates, sorry, my x-coordinates should become opposites. So let's apply those rules, and then we'll graph the image and make sure that it worked out from the graph. So according to the rules, the x-coordinates need to become the opposite here, which is what they're showing me for that, if it's a reflection in the y-axis. So um, for a, I'm going to be going to a prime, which should be located at negative 3, comma 5. Notice that my y-coordinate did not change, and my x-coordinate became the opposite. Um, B prime should be located at negative 4, 2, and C prime should be located at negative 1, 0. Okay, let's see how I did. I get a graph that looks something like that. Um, which kind of does look like an image of it. Oh, I see that I screwed up. Should be to there. That's C prime. Anyway, let's see how I did. Let's check it here. There we go. So the image looks like the one that I graphed um, after I fixed it. Um, so I must have applied the rules correctly to get the same coordinates that they did. I hope you wrote the rules for those uh, coordinate changes. Uh, down so that you can use them here because you're going to reflect uh, triangle LMN in both the x-axis and the y-axis. Good luck, students.